This is the All Saints Bible Study, where the Word of God is alive with power. If you would, please join me in a word of prayer. Our God of Fathers, through you we move and we have our being. As we approach your word, it is our prayer. We're able to glean the true intent of the scripture according to your will. And therefore, we are empowered to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. This I pray in your son Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen and amen. I have a scripture for you. And today, as you know, is Thursday. So it's time to go to the Word of God. So let's go to the Word of God. We're going to go to Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse number 14. Just one verse. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. I want to read that verse again. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. This is a notion, holiness, holiness. It comes from a Greek term, hagaizo, which means purification or even purity. And so even in the Old Testament, over in Leviticus, the 11th chapter and the 44th verse, God himself says, be ye holy for I am holy. So from the very, if you allow me to say, the very mouth of God, God requires his people to be holy. So I hasten to say that holiness is not a denominational construct. It's not something that is exclusively affiliated with one particular denomination. Holiness is a concept which comes from God. First of all, God is holy. The creator of the cosmos, the God of the Bible is holy. And then he declares, you be holy for I am holy. Now, the opposite of holiness is sin. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. I find it very interesting in this day where holiness really isn't preached. The notion of sin seemingly is no longer accepted. It's all relative to my needs. It's relative to my worldly view. And so the notion of sin, the wages of sin, the consequences of sin is no longer accepted. For there are people who believe that God being a, <coughs> excuse me, God being a loving God would never respond with harsh judgment due to the rebellion against God's will, which is sin. Well, it's critical that we understand, as I've already stated, the Bible says, righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. The Bible also, it even states that the wages, the consequence, the cost of sin is death. Thanks be unto God, Jesus comes on the scene and he says, I come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. So the, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that. So this is taking us back to the notion of holiness, purity, purification. It is critical that we pursue the holiness of God. And, and, and I, I, one point that I really want to concentrate on is, is holiness allows the believer to have an intimate relationship with God. I find it very strange and very bizarre that people do not want to consider holiness or relationship with God, but they want to experience the blessings of God. 
If you read scripture, blessings do not come out of, or blessings are not given to one who is living a sinful life. Blessings do not come to a person who does not have a relationship with God. First, the person must accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, establish a relationship with the Lord, Lord be filled with the Holy Spirit, have this close, intimate relationship by way, church attendance, prayer, fasting, biblical readings. These items enable the believer to have this intimate relationship with God. However, holiness is the requirement. So you have church attendance, you have Bible reading, you have prayer, you have fasting. If you do, if you are not living a holy life, all of those items are for naught. For holiness is a requirement dictated by God. So if you want to be blessed by God, if you want to have the benefits of a divine God, you must live a holy life. So many of the things that people are doing in this world today, it is sinful. It is rebellion against God. Yes. So in order to have the benefits, the one, one great blessing is health. Having a loving family. Many of these things that we take for granted. Holiness is required. I want to go to another scripture. And then we're going to conclude. First Peter, the first chapter, verses 15 and 16. But as he which hath called you is holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. I want to go back to verse 15 where it says, so be ye holy in all matter of conversation. Another translation says, be ye, man, be ye holy in all manner of conduct. Again, there is the theme of holiness in how we live our lives. So if you're under the notion that you can live a life you can drink, you can smoke, you can gamble, you can have a relationship with someone, an intimate relationship with someone who isn't your wife. These things are sinful and therefore it separates you from God. It's a wall between you and God. And when you are living a sinful life, God doesn't hear your prayer. You can try to, play, to pray, but God does not hear your prayer. Sin causes a separation between you and God. Holiness enables a close, intimate relationship with God. And therefore, God hears your prayer. Not only does he hear your prayer, he answers your prayers. And through this relationship, God's power, God's authority is manifest in your life. But if you are not living that kind of life, if you are not living a holy life, there is no relationship. Therefore, there is no manifestation of God's power, God's love, God's grace in your life. This is a biblical notion that comes forth from the very mouth of God. We are all required to be holy. God requires it. God, he, he, he has dictated, he desires. For God wants to have a relationship with you. But it's through the holy lifestyle by way of the blood of Jesus. And therefore, you can live, let me say this, 
you can live a holy life. It is possible to live a holy life. Some people believe it is not, it, it is impossible to be holy. Again, as I go back to what I said early, through prayer, fasting, church attendance, biblical reading, all these empower and enable you with the Holy Spirit to live that life. It's not about the holiness church. It's not even about the sanctified church. It's about what God says. God being holy wants his people to be holy. Well, I pray that you were blessed by that scripture, blessed by the notion of holiness and how it is required if we want to see God one day. We must be holiness. Without holiness, it is impossible to please God. And I want to please God. Don't you want to please God? Well, it's through holiness. God is pleased with our lives. Well, if you like to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, well, all you need to do is pray a simple little prayer. Pray this prayer with me. Put your hand on your device, your laptop, even your iPad. Let's pray together. Lord, I believe that you are the son of the living God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And I believe that God the Father raised you from the dead. Forgive me of all my sins. I want to live a holy life before you. I want to experience the manifestation of your power in my life. This I pray in your son Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen and amen. Now, that's the only prayer that God hears of a sinner. And if you pray that prayer, God has heard it and your sins are forgiven. So now I want to urge you, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And therefore, pursue the righteousness of God. And so that you can be a witness, you can be the salt of the earth and the light of the world in this world. To live holy and righteous and godly in this present world. Blessings to you.